Rolling. Rolling. <coughs> rolling. All right. Cool. All good. Uh, good. Blank. <sighs> there it is. trailed into one of these kind of with a conversation already going no because we? we don't really talk to each other outside of the podcast no we just and can't. now it's officially started so we can now we can talk yeah right so you're putting tomatoes in your fucking chili yeah yeah is yeah. that normal do you think that's normal behavior um i don't know the, the thing is um i started uh, when i started making chili i yeah. used to use leftover bolognese to do it so it always had tomatoes in it right and so you've continued it yeah you've continued that tradition that's your legacy <laughs> my chili <laughs> Your I am tomato world renowned and chili. Yeah. tomato chili yeah. yeah do you know apparently you can make crisps in the microwave did not know that yeah because when someone told me I said oh we Steve made his own crisps at a party once and it was a, like with a fry and she was like no yeah. just use a microwave and she doesn't understand how it works but it works she doesn't it works but she knows how to do it put it in the microwave just yeah. put a potato in the microwave and, and crisps. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> or put them in a kettle and you get posh crisps or, or crisps or something. Right. Yeah, just thinly sliced potato with a bit of oil splat on it. Yeah. And then technically, I guess it works. I guess. There's a weird taboo around microwave, isn't there? It's like, oh, it's lazy. But I guess it's, it's just... It's just another way to cook things. You like, can make nice things in a microwave. It's like calling it an oven political. if you're a shit cook, you'll make yeah. shit food. Yeah probably do anything in the microwave yeah but i don't know whether this is still true it's still true mm. uh, but i don't know if you can microwave a biscuit that was like the cool fun example my physics teacher used to give us in gcse oh like whether it'd warm up yeah because there's cause, no moisture in it yeah and apparently microwaves just vibrate the water molecules yeah but the more i think about it how does it know the difference between a water molecule and a molecule it doesn't know that it's not the microwave figuring out and like that's water uh, yes that's, it is <laughs> But yeah, but I swear, if it's like if you send a load of, I don't know, um, tomatoes. If you s- send a load of Nine Inch Nails fans to a Spice yeah. Girls concert, yeah, like it's not the Spice Girls who are deciding who's going to react to their music or not. It's just here's some music. Oh, those people think it's shit. So the Spice Girls, the microwave or the biscuit? Spice Girls are the microwave. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and Nine Inch Nails are the biscuit. Nine Inch Nails fans are the are the biscuit. Yeah, yeah they don't react to it. It'd be weird if uh, Trent Reznor did a tour now. He does the loads of soundtracks. It's just like Trent Reznor soundtracks, yeah. <laughs> soundscapes, I, um, Warner. Yeah, <laughs> it's good soundtracks. Yeah, but yeah, what's what, what, what's he done? Well, he did a load of stuff for Call of Duty. He did uh, I think the soundtrack for like Mr. Robot. A yeah. load of like dystopian, futuristic yeah. cyber films. Yeah, that kind of electric, dark kind of I stuff. Thought, did he, did he do something like the Social Network? Yes, he did. Yeah, he did do the Social Network. Some, right. Okay. Yeah, I've got a few songs that I like work to. Mm. It's like, yeah, there's a couple of soundtracks in there that are very Trent Reznor, uh, that yeah. are Trent Reznor, and yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, bits of. Uh, I only ever I only network. ever know it's him when it's like the when it's actually him singing, like in um. Yeah. What's that? What's that crap film about bending bullets? Oh, Wanted. Yeah, he did like oh, he did. a theme song for that. Every oh, day he is had exactly the... the same. Yeah, but that was like a track. That Was it a track that he wrote for the song? I don't know. Was it? I don't know. Worked Maybe they stole well. it. Yeah, well, he doesn't put tomatoes in his chili, I don't think. Probably not. No, I think, uh, I think it's just a bad move. Fair enough. Did you put tomatoes in everything, Steve? Did you used to make your cereal out of bolognese? Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you had a good week? Uh, yeah, it's been all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, um, Vix has gone away, and I forget kind of like how empty the house is when yeah. I'm the only one in it. <laughs> because you're like, nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair yeah. Right. I mean, you came straight in and commented on the chair. Yeah, you just had a chair in the middle of the room. A dining room table just in the middle of the kitchen that you would sit in to remind yourself of how alone you are now. Yeah, but it was far enough away from the dining room table so it was actually, you couldn't sit at the table. No, it was just in the but doorway. close enough to experience the whole room and make no use of it. 
Yeah. yeah. It was in a doorway, basically. Yeah. Instead of a door, you had a chair. Yeah. And that door's not a door, it's a curtain. Yeah. Well, next time there might be like a low hanging beam and a noose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Steve was vaguely here. <laughs> described on it. That's on my tombstone. <laughs> yeah, just question mark. Just, I was vaguely here. I said to Vix the other week, like, we were talking about there was, the conversation of like deadly animals came up and then oh, yeah. it was like hippos. Like, because hippos. she's going to Ireland. Exactly, lots of hippos in yeah. Ireland. Um, like, and they're like the, the, the biggest killer of, of, uh, of people yeah. in Africa animal wise in africa i yeah. guess unless you count like mosquitoes yeah um but um yeah so like the like horrendously deadly and i i said the i i want to be either cremated or i want one of those urns that turns you into a tree right because i thought that would be quite interesting to be a tree yeah um but be part of a tree the o- I, I said the only um the only condition if i uh, if if you bury me yeah. Like if I have a tombstone is I have to have died in a hilarious way. So it's inscribed like okay. if I if, right. if I got if I got mowed down by a hippo, I would want a hippo shaped tombstone. I want everyone to know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. With like d- died doing what he loves. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right Trampled by hippos. <laughs> yeah. I read it there was a, a tweet Because other than that, I don't want to take up space. Unless yeah. I'm a tree. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, unless I want to take up loads well, I've got of space. A function. You haven't got a function if you're just buried. Well, you but as a tree, ground. like, like you, people can't go and enjoy your grave, but they can yeah. go and sit under a tree. Yeah, I guess it's how people mourn, isn't it? Yeah, I read a. There, what's it called when there's like a series of tweets, like part part five of one. Yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tweet series. Oh, yeah, where they put like parentheses around them. Yeah, it's like just. Fuck off. <laughs> well, I read one that was just like a story, and it apparently, I don't know whether it's true or false, but it's about how um, when his someone he knew died, I think his brother died or something, mm. he used to get so many flowers for his brother's grave, and everyone he knew got so many flowers that he felt bad for the grave next to him. Yeah. Because I had never had any flowers, never had any visits. Right. So he started also buying flowers for them. Okay. And then, um, then he found out that that person. Uh, killed his wife and child before turning the gun on himself. Oh, okay. Yeah, no flowers. So then he was like, hmm, I kind of feel bad for this. So then he wanted to go and apologise to the living (laughs) relatives of this murder. And that's how he met his wife. (laughs) 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 He started talking to her. He's like, oh, it's kind of funny. I can understand why you kind of come up to tell me. And then they got married. But it could just be a series of weird short stories. He met met the... The survivors... Didn't yeah. The he didn't marry the corpse. Didn't he? Did yeah. He didn't meet <laughs> the dead guy's wife. No, he killed. He her. met his future wife. Yes. Yes. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 He fell in love. Yeah. 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 Which is it's, yeah. Oh. I think that's that's an interesting way to meet someone. Yeah, through yeah. wrongly celebrating or the life of a yeah a serial killer. Yeah, I guess you're a serial killer if the third one's yourself. If you're in some kind, con- one country's three, one country's four. Yeah, I can't remember what makes a serial killer anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Gordon Hitler, what did your dad do? Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, I gave him some flowers. Oh, <laughs> let's fall in love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had a bit of a yeah, weird week. Uh, I've been, I was doing the just water solidly for a what for nine days. Oh, yeah. 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 Then I went out and uh, went, went out for an evening in Manchester and yep. was like, ah, uh, it would kind of be weird for me. To, and I was really craving it. So I was like, right, I'll tell you what, I'll try having like one drink or two drinks on a night out. Yeah. Because I was like, immediately, every time I go to the cinema, no matter what my diet's been, I've always been like, well, I'll always have a drink, a fizzy drink and popcorn when I go to the cinema. Yeah. That's my treat. So I I can't do this forever. So I'll try that. And honestly, I had one. (laughs) I had uh, a Ricoeur de Ligue uh, passion fruit cider, Uh, just a bottle of cider. Yeah. And you would think I'd done Coke. (laughs) It was such a change. Like... Almost immediately, yeah. that you would think I was high as fuck. <laughs> I was just like, "Fuck it!" Let's, like, energy is boom, and like, let's go out. Let's, I'm just gonna do everything. It's gonna be horrible. <laughs> yeah, and now yeah. I'm here. Yeah, so trying to yeah, slowly kind of getting back under control. Yeah, but I don't think I'm. Yeah, it, it, it's that reminder that I've got such a fucking addictive personality. Yeah, that it's just like yeah, just have one. It's like oh, and it's not necessarily just the chemical reaction. I imagine as a mental thing of you're you're under control, you're disciplined, you've broken that discipline, so you might as well. 
you know, yeah. fuck up the rest of it. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's just uh, total abstinence. And it was getting better. It was getting more manageable. And it was definitely uh, a, a, an improvement on my lifestyle, just drinking water, even though I was still consuming sugar. I was like, first of all, get the water under control. And then you can sort out the food. But the food was better because of the water. It was still a bit bad, but it was it wasn't like, you know, only eating lettuce or something. Mm. It was like, no, everything's kind of under control. But yeah, as soon as I just had one drink, it was just, yeah. Over. It was, it, and ridiculously so. Yeah. Like, if I wasn't walking around, I'd be like tapping the table and be like, oh, fucking, yeah. It's like, it's such a drug. Yeah. You just, you just, you get so accustomed to it that you're just like, nah, it's not a drug. Yeah. I've always said it's a drug. It's an addictive thing and well, it's bad it's, for your health. It but is. It's just, it really felt it when you remove it's, it for a while. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. I, I, I said to, I said to Vix the other day, like people used to, it used to just be okay for them to just eat coca leaves. Yeah. Have that and then like <laughs> Mental. almost like in the same way that we'd have caffeine. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it just gives you a bit of a perk. And then it was like, well, what happens if we refine it with like, they put, use like, fucking petrol and like all kinds of weird <laughs> shit to refine it down to fucking cocaine and it's like that's what sugar is it's yeah. it's it's highly refined when in actual fact in 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 the wild to get as much sugar as you would in i don't know a can of, of tea or something like yeah like just two spoons of sugar or something you'd be eating like an entire field or something ridiculous <laughs> like it, it's it, yeah it's it is it is a drug like well, in- the wonder Mary Poppins can fucking fly if she's keeps saying like every time you have medicine, have a spoonful of sugar. Yeah, and people were really ill back then. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> she just leaves before the negative effects come along. Yeah, she floats away yeah. on a fucking umbrella. She's a, she's she she's pushing sugar. Yeah, to kids. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> floating around. Yeah, weird dealer that's dictated by the direction of the wind. Yeah, yeah. It's like, wasn't it like if the wind blows west? Yeah. Then there's Mary Poppins. Yeah. It's like, a weird work schedule. And then that that goes down to like to Willy Wonka, where it's like he is a gang lord. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like he literally has little people it's working pr- for him. Bolivians. To create all varieties <laughs> of these addictive substances. That a child to push on kids. Him. Yeah. It's child- like oh, products going downhill. Better better have a tour. And they fly, don't they, in there? Yeah. Yeah, because they had lemonade. Yeah. And then they fucking go to Fizzy the sky lifting and nearly, drinks. <laughs> nearly get shredded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One kid drowns in fucking chocolate, chocolate. lake. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, one kid gets sucked into a TV for some reason. Yeah. Yeah. Another turns into a chocolate. blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drug! God yeah. damn it! <laughs> it's going to do all this fucked up shit Yeah, it was, it was an allegory on the evils of sugar. Yeah. Yeah. I like the original. Did you, did you watch the remake? The, uh, I did. It's not. Yeah. It's. I mean, it's, it's a. You have to see it as a different. And, and it's not even a different film. It's like a different universe. It's just yeah. completely separate to the whole thing. Yeah. And then I think you can enjoy the two. Yeah. But I was just tempted to. Like I. Ins- I understand kind of why you made it. In that mm. I think Roald Dahl never liked the original, even though everyone else fucking loved it. But he said it was. It wasn't dark enough. Like the original, his book was supposed to But it was dark in a dark. nice, subtle way. You know yeah. what I mean? It, I yeah. thought it had the it just balance had quite nice. Really kind of creepy moments. And you've got to remember, like, this was in the 50s where they're like, we, we can't market horror films for kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. This was before the Blair Witch where someone stood in a corner facing the wall. Yeah. And they were like, now we can sell horror films yeah. to kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But then the, um, the what's his name version? Tim Burton. Yeah, Tim Burton. Um, yeah, it was it was okay. I always find his films like very stylistic but very hollow. Like I always leave be- mm. and a week later I can't remember anything about it. The the yeah. one exception was Edward Scissorhands, which I thought was actually made quite an impression on me. Fair play. Yeah. He he could make chili with tomatoes in it relative with yeah. relative ease. He didn't have to buy chopped tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> no, he just accidentally chopped everything he owned. Yeah. Oh, anyway, oh, oh dear. Yeah, whole tin. <laughs> life's life's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so yeah, apart from drug-addled sugar re- withdrawal, again, it was perfectly kind of manageable. And then, yeah, it was just like, oh, I'll just treat myself to one. And it's like, no. Oh, just yeah. And like, I was just amazed at how quick... I mean, not amazed. Yeah. I'm probably like that with a few different things. But yeah, just as soon as yeah. that happened, a snowball effect of like, oh, back to square one. Yeah. And then try and do it. Do you think that's like... I, like, I think food in general is a drug. Like, particularly like an overindulgence of it. Because it is all just refined stuff now. It's like... 
How? Because yeah. that's the that's the most addictive stuff. Mm. So, is there a point in the future now where we've got like this obesity epidemic and whatever that they're going to start having rehabs for people who are addicted to food? Because it do is like an addiction. Soylent green kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I do think that the way you know. Yeah, I mean, just think about. I mean, I haven't had pizza for a while, but when you think about what pizza is, it really is just a loaf of bread mm. with jam on it. That like, jam <laughs> is just pepperoni yeah, and throw some cheese. Yeah, yeah, and it's but like the like eighty percent of it is probably bread. Yeah, so you're just eating bread, and even even if bread is great, mm. then you're like, you just why not just have bread? You know, it's like oh, but it's a mixture of things. It's like oh, okay, and then you just add more and more stuff to it. Yeah, I, what I, I told we've talked before about. I think it was like a um, a glutton culture with mm. a lot of food about like you i eat the biggest those, pizza in the world you get it with those stupid burgers that are like eight yeah. feet high it's like, yeah and i've worked in places you can't taste all that yeah i've worked in places where they're like oh we've got a burger with lucky charms on it and you're like how right. does that add to the burger no yeah. but it adds to the sugar coma yeah it's just it's just you people and i've said it before like um uh when i was doing uh one i think i was trying the carnivore diet or some one of the diets and it was like you don't actually eat to feel full anymore you feel you eat to feel bloated and mm. now most people associate being bloated with being full yeah because it's forgotten like what being satisfied feels like yeah and it's just like if you can just stop eating whatever you're eating halfway through and you won't feel hungry anymore yeah because it's not like your stomach is 80 percent full or 20 percent full it's your stomach has something in it yeah and it's happy yeah yeah, yeah. people so. don't you got to give it you got to give it time i always have a thing where like if i've if i've eaten and i i know how much is in it like calorie wise and i still feel hungry afterwards just give it 20 minutes yeah and like if after 20 minutes you're still really hungry or whatever is that what the chair in the doorway is for is you sit that's there for my, 20 that's minutes my 20 minute yeah. 20 minute chair yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. halfway in the kitchen half in the lounge yeah it's it's the indecisive hunger so chair you, you can figure yeah. out where to go yeah, it's uh, it's it's a it's a very literal representation of the Hunger Games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't mean to be so dismissive. I've just stopped trying to top people now. Yeah, with like certain statements. Like I think we, there's a Facebook chat recently. That's half our show. What are you <laughs> yes. doing? No, nah, but just like when, when I feel like there's nowhere else you can go, but that's a that's a good place for it to finish. Yeah, be like, yeah. just point it out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. Well done. Yeah, that, moving that, on. Yeah. Anyway, someone died. <laughs> Graves. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I think I've just been trying to stop doing that. So that was my instinct. That was the more more of a self thing. Just like, oh, well done. <laughs> this is meant to be like, no, it's a good place to leave it. Yeah. Anyway, good. thanks for pointing it out to everybody. Yeah, edit it out. I'm not gonna swear. <laughs> <laughs> you prick. Yeah, uh, I've been trying to figure out because there's a, this uh, there's one news article that would be really nice to put the video in, and I've watched more YouTube stuff that's like what we do or is a podcast and like has videos in it, and it seems to be fine. But I don't know. My, my brain automatically goes, "Well, just you know, re reenact the video, make you make your own video." And you're like, "Oh yeah, I was get yeah, sound guy, camera guy, yeah. stage, yeah." <laughs> Oh, this, this, this advert's got 12 people in it. Okay, well, let's get 12 people. <laughs> so I'll just play myself and all of them. It kind of work. Yeah. Maybe for the future, but for time pressed, like, no, don't no. think I can. Yeah. Not while there's other work to be, other jobs that I have to work yeah. and all that. But uh, Burger King came out with an advert. I should also point out as well, this is a somewhat unique episode because uh, because of time constraints, we're kind of recording it a little early. And we've got loads of um, audience participation emails that have come in, which are awesome. Keep them coming, people. Um, so we're going to go through a whole bunch of those. So all of these, I think, are from the audience. Okay. So whether or not you like them or not is not my fault. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for the submissions. So Burger King uh, is having an advertising campaign against McDonald's. Now, what do you think is the most evil part about McDonald's. and it's just it's kind of all right in terms of what they're doing but if you were to think of i mean i had it a little while ago i think george carlin had a bit on it as well about there's something in mcdonald's that's kind of somewhat weirdly evil 1984 first thing that springs to mind uh clowns clowns yeah um, maybe giving toys to kids yeah yeah mm -hmm. that's kind of weird is yeah by because it's probably about the same price as an average toy. Yeah. What is it? Happy Meal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, but you, you get obesity get, as well. You get loads of salt as well. Yeah. Have, let's have salt too. 
No tomatoes. Yeah. They don't give tomatoes to kids. No, there's no tomatoes on no. their burgers, are there? Put gherkins the on them, one. which is weird because kids don't like gherkins. I always used to take mine off. I love they, them now. The gherkins on the kids' burgers? I thought so. I thought there Maybe. were gherkins on everything, as everything. they should be. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, they're attacking Happy Meals because it is kind of weird to sell a box of happiness. Yeah. And that's So your you're product. saying that happiness is fries and a burger. Yeah. Yeah. And a toy. Or nuggets. That you can choke on. Yeah. If the happiness gets too much. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Burger King is um, uh, launching their own kind of meals that aren't happy meals <laughs> they're other meals which are umbrellaed as real meals to celebrate being yourself and feeling however you want to feel <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be happy. exactly, exactly. <laughs> just, just fucking eat the burger <laughs> for fuck's sake um yeah the advert is one minute 47 it's mm. a musical advert and it starts off with someone i think like on the edge of a bed holding his head and saying, not everybody wakes up happy. Sometimes you feel sad, scared, and crappy. All I ask is that you let me feel my way. Like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Right. <laughs> all, you, all you ask of a fast food restaurant is to let you feel how you feel. Mm. Good. Yeah. Don't, don't expect a fast food chain to dictate your emotions. Yeah, yeah. Because they've given you a Happy Meal, there's no obligation on your side. To be happy. No. Or to no. be wanting of happiness. But then try telling a kid that. Most kids who are given a happy meal will then be happy. Yeah, but if you gave a kid a chilli without tomatoes in it, they'd be like, oh, I'm well happy. Yeah. You Give a I mean? kid a feel what you want meal. <laughs> yeah. Like... <laughs> well, there's five different real meals and the options correspond with different moods, right? You've okay. got pissed, which I'm assuming means angry, not okay. drunk. <laughs> <laughs> drunk me <laughs> everything to, to all the kids that yeah. wasted so this is like five different burgers stacked on top of each other in a coke because <laughs> yeah. fuck it yeah there's the blue meal which is the sad meal oh you're sad oh, they, have this. they haven't dyed the buns have they I wouldn't uh, they've dyed the boxes which right. is kind of expected but I imagine they might have done it I've yeah. seen uh, look, black burger buns have been a big thing for yeah, a while yeah Burger King were big on that for oh, like okay. um, for when Star Wars came out, you, the Darth Vader <laughs> the burger, Star Wars like, burger. All right. Oh, it's got abandonment issues in it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Feels great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna betray my beloved teacher of many years yeah. to try and reclaim thirty seconds of a relationship with my son. <laughs> Pointless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stay alive, you dick. Be a better father later on. Twat. Hmm. Darth Vader. Well done. Admittedly, he was going. <laughs> yeah. Admittedly, like I think he was going to die. He was going to kill Luke. I don't remember the films that well. I was never a Star Wars guy. Neither was I. I just watched them. I've, I think I've se- I've seen all but the few of the newest ones. Yeah, I didn't see the, the solo one. Yeah, I, I saw the I saw the first new one and was just like, eh, I don't want to see the others now. I don't care. Yeah, yeah, wasn't that? Yeah, it was a bit. Although yeah, I was I've never heard, like a big fan. I've heard that the um. What the fuck is it? Not solo, but the uh, Last Jedi. No, it's not one of the. It's not one of the big Star Wars films. It was like an Clone individual uh, little story they did, like one or two. Years Indiana ago. Jones. That's got the same guy in it. <laughs> <laughs> he took a break to go fucking. I can't remember. Steal I can't remember what one. it is. I can't, I can't remember what it is. Obviously, it's the wooden cut. It's, I think it's twat. almost. It's been described as like a sort of like a, a. It's a single mission where they're trying to get the. The plans for the Death Star. Yeah, I thought that was the last. Jedi. I know which one you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Rogue One. There Rogue One. Yeah, I've heard that that's very good. Right. But I just don't care. <laughs> no. Just no. Yeah, never been a, a fan fan of it. It's just kind of been a film that I've understood the references to. Yeah. More accurately. Never. I don't. Not a big fan of the universe. Let's put it that way. I wouldn't be like, yeah. oh, wouldn't it be cool if this happened? I'd be it like, I don't care. Just the story. Why not? Doesn't interest me. Like I've seen so many sci-fi shows now where I'm just like, this is such a better fucking universe than Star Wars. Yeah. It's 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 so much more interesting to me. I was I was pleasantly surprised by the expanse, the uh, yeah the universe in there. Love where, the expanse. Like it, I haven't it was caught a, the last season, so no spoilers. Yeah, yeah, I haven't like, seen that either. One and two, I've seen. Picked it up by somebody else. Didn't yeah, they? fucking love but, the expanse. Yeah, but I was like, oh, it feels very comic booky, cyberpunky. The detectives, you know, got a. I love that. I love the noir like, kind of thing yeah. to it. And I was just like, oh, it feels a bit gimmicky, but it actually kind of worked out. It yeah. actually worked quite well. So it's yeah. quite pleasant. First season, start to finish, is just fucking sick. 
Like, I yeah. absolutely love it. Yeah. But yeah, the first season of Real Meals by Burger King. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blue Meal is sad. The salty meal, just some salt. <laughs> <laughs> For when you're feeling bitter. When you're feeling bitter and you want a burger. No. A bitter burger. Fair enough. Uh, the Yas meal, which means excited, because Yas oh, means yes. excited. Because everyone's fucking... The don't give a fuck meal. DGAF. Yeah. Don't know what that's meant to... It doesn't say what the burgers are in. Don't I give think. a fuck what's in it. Yeah. Uh, the boxes come... Hang on, I think it's just got the same stuff in it. The boxes come with a full-sized Whopper combo meal with fries and a shake, but no toy. No toy! <laughs> 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 yeah, it's all the same meal. Yeah. Oh. It's just a different box. Different box. All right. If you're not feeling happy, then no, just have a have a don't give a fuck meal. Yeah. Why not? So it's just a way of people being able to outwardly express how they're feeling with a box. Yeah. To their to the nobody who's in their car with them. Yeah. Basically. But the contents are exactly the same. Yes. It's just a packaging thing. So the whole meal Fair enough. is about as shallow as the person that buys it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're collaborating with the mental with mental health month. Or like mental, health, mental awareness. health awareness. Buy a box. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Buy several different boxes that look different, but they're actually the same because yeah. everything's pointless. Yeah. Can you talk? No. So like, just hold up which box. Like, <laughs> yeah, how, how are you do feeling you today? Yourself? <laughs> no uh, happy meals. You can't be happy. <laughs> While not everyone would think about pairing fast food and mental health, mental health awareness believes in elevating the conversation in all communities in order to address mental illness before stage four. End of statement. Stage four! <laughs> How did we get to stage four? There weren't enough burger boxes. What is stage four? Have we rebranded suicide? <laughs> stage four refers to this, not in the quote. The quote is just before, before stage, stage four. four. Though, and then, uh, you know. Drop the mic. You know, walk away. <laughs> you know what stage four is. The huddled masses. What the fuck is stage four? <laughs> uh, burger King. Uh, stage four refers to the stage with the highest severity of symptoms of mel- mental illness which the mental health awareness describes as persistent, severe, and life-threatening. Before stage four campaign works to address mental health issues before they get to that point. So before your mental health issues become persistent, or severe, or life... And, so all three, I guess. So as soon as your your symptoms become life-threatening, which I guess is obviously stage stage four. It's weird that this this is the fourth stage. Mm-hmm. Which I, everyone's got to have a finite number of stages, by definition, I guess. Yeah. But I don't know. I'd round it up to five. Yeah. Stage five. Oh, maybe stage five is you've died because of it. <laughs> maybe that's how it works. So that's mental awareness. Uh, just, <laughs> just give me a quick call because they thought I was reaching stage four. Uh, everything's fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> how do we edit that out? Uh. That'll help. Burger King. <laughs> Burger King released a commercial to coincide with the new boxes in which several people have various kinds of bad days. And they admit it's okay not to be okay all the time. And they add swaps to their iconic have it your way with feel your way. So all of their not happy meals yeah. are just different kinds of misery. Yeah. They're all sad. Yeah. They are all sad. We've got... Sorry, I've lost them now. Apart from like... Maybe Mad, don't... sad, bitter, excited, and don't give a fuck. Okay, there's excited. There's excited. excited. Excited's good. One out of five. But don't give a fuck isn't necessarily a positive thing. It's like... No. Do you want this? Oh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> does, does the world gonna... It, I'm not gonna be here for long enough to give, to give a fuck. So, yeah. yeah just yeah, last no. meal has a burger. <laughs> it's weird that you get a lot... It's just like polite to give someone their last meal, isn't it? That's a social contract. Yeah. If you're going to kill someone, you have to give them like a chili with tomatoes in it or something. Was it a thing over here? I, I, know. I know about it from the States, but I don't know did where we if, if we did that when we were hanging people. Did they do it when they... I know they do it with the injection and like modern executions. I don't yeah. know whether they did it before. Right. It was like a new wave to kind of put a, a bright smiley face on execution. Yeah. Well, at least he had a, you know, an ex- a yas meal. <laughs> so he was super excited to be stabbed yeah. stabbed to death it's weird that they never stabbed anyone to death as a government I mean I'm sure they did in some way that you could read into but not as like an execute I mean if you get beheaded are you stabbed to death no no you're chopped to death yeah yeah 
What do you want for your last meal? Oh, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Thanks for ordering that. But people are weird about food, but people are weird about corporations, and people are weird about adverts okay. in particular. Yeah. And that nicely segues... Segway! <laughs> into, ...into this one, which, you know, people are angry about, but it's another thing where you go... Just because it's called a Happy Meal doesn't mean you have to be happy. Marks and Spencers have been accused of exploiting LGBT culture by selling a gay sandwich. Is that exploitative? Who's to say the sandwich is gay? I think Marks and Spencers. Right. Oh, is it just, just rainbow coloured? Yeah. Isn't every place in the fucking world selling rainbow coloured <laughs> shit right now? Well, it's also... It's a it's a lettuce, guacamole, bacon, and... Tom, you'll love it. Tomato sandwich. Right, okay. So LGBTQ... Sandwich, the, yeah, it's just got all this stuff on it. But it's, I think it's in, it is intentionally done. Yeah, like as as an, instead of a What's lettuce, bacon, and tomato. Oh, quiche, quinoa, <laughs> uh, quinoa, <laughs> quiche. Yeah, Quebec. <laughs> just a uh, bit of Quebec. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds. That's not even a big number. No. Hundreds have taken to social media to slam the supermarket over the insensitive snack, with some calling for the sandwiches to be taken down from the shelves. Shut up, Twitter. Take it off the shelves. It's a gay sandwich. Why? Um, okay, so why does it matter when it's why, why does it matter when it's LGBTQ and not when it's like um, I don't know Cancer Awareness Month and everything yeah. goes pink? What's the difference? Yeah, it's no difference. It's uh, I mean the only I mean. Because it hasn't gotten to the description of the sandwich yet. It's basically the packaging is. Rain, I think it's a, there's a rainbow on it, and there's a there's a, a, a notification that it says like, "Oh, we've donated ten thousand pounds to an LGBTQ charity, yeah, and a thousand pounds to another charity." And uh, I don't think it's like these the proceeds from this sandwich will go to those charities. Right. I don't think that's the case. It's just a sandwich that has packaging that they've added guacamole to an LBT sandwich to make it an LGBT sandwich. But they don't and have to give the proceeds away. No, they, and then this, this is this is this is the this is the warped thing about it that I think people just don't understand, don't have enough self worth. Yeah, I think basically, I mean, um, so um, if I hang like a rainbow flag outside my house, do I have to give my wages away at the end of the month? Yeah, but just it's it's not about it's not. I think people were expecting, were un- understanding it as. Marks and Spencer's are now marketing a gay sandwich, which means they're now selling it specifically to gay people, which means they think that gay people have to buy it. And you mm, go like, no. no, they're just selling an, a, a, late, a lettuce, guacamole, bacon and tomato sandwich yeah. with that packaging. And they've donated to charity. They're not looking to sell more to yeah. a specific demographic. Not everybody that wears pink ribbons has got cancer. And then even then, if if say the sandwich uh, was going to charity, some of the te- a penny from every sandwich was going to charity, you go. It doesn't mean that they're looking for LGBTQ people to buy the sandwich. They're looking to give money to charity to any from anybody yeah. who buys that sandwich. So they're not marketing it towards you. Um, uh, in a, in, a, in a tweet, uh, someone called Mister Wright, an artistic director, said, "Calling all LGBTs." Get yourselves down to Marks and Spencers and help yourself to a free gay sandwich. No need to pay, babe. Just walk in and take this trash off the shelves. Not sure whether this applies. This offer applies to allies too. This offer, it's not an offer. It's a sandwich <laughs> with a price. Yeah. If anything, it's a marketing campaign. It's yeah. not an offer. They're not. It's not a discounted price. Yeah. It's not. That's the only sandwich you can buy. Or, or whatever. Yeah. He later added the promotion basically equates us to a sandwich. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. In any way. He also says, I can't imagine them doing this with other marginalized groups. And you go, hang on. There's a whole aisle dedicated to Chinese. Yeah. And Asian. And yeah. Indian. Yeah. So, yeah, they definitely equate D- certain def- areas market. towards uh, 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 just by describing certain de- demographics because yeah. again the other people are allowed in the Asian aisle yeah. they're allowed to buy Asian food if they're not Asian yeah. you're allowed to buy an LGBT an LGBT sandwich if you're not LGBT yeah it's just a sandwich <laughs> just- the supermarket released a sandwich to raise money for the Albert Kennedy Trust a charity helped dedicated to helping homeless LGBT plus youth uh, the MNS said they donated ten grand to the charity, and we're making a further grand donation to another charity of the same kind in Ireland. Um, 
um, people are saying that it's too expensive at three pounds a sandwich. Mm. You're in Marks and Spencers. Yeah. Like, it's a more expensive shop. I'd imagine the average sandwich is about three pounds. I don't know how good uh, lettuce, bacon, tomato, and guac sandwich would be. But I'm not a big fan of bacon in sandwiches or tomatoes. In, well, tomatoes in sandwiches are grown on me for I a think while. it'd be okay, but I, th- I, I think they've just slung it together for the sake of it. Yeah, they've just, just been like, like, let's spice well, up the LBT. Yeah, you could have you could have still just used lettuce. Oh wait, no, is it to? It's just it's to it's for the color and for the for the letter, guac. I don't know. It's for the letter at least. Oh, I, don't, I don't. Yeah, know. I don't think it's for a color. It's not that's great. It a sounds rainbow. like a shit sandwich. <laughs> yeah. But they're like three pounds for guacamole. I guess they're hoping gays really have expensive taste. That's some three Twitter quid people. isn't expensive for a sandwich, especially in one of the most expensive yeah. supermarket chains. And they're not marketing it towards the LGBT community. No. They're marketing it just to people. Yeah. Like, yes, it happens to have guacamole in it, which changes an LBT into LGBT. And yes, they probably noticed that as being a marketing thing. It's, oh, it's an LGBT sandwich. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they're only going to sell it or they're only trying to sell it to homosexuals. Yeah. Or, they, or no. anyone on that spectrum. Yeah. It's like, no, it's just a sandwich, mate. Like, Chill out. So if I go and buy one of those sandwiches... Do they now think that I'm gay? Well, it's just, it's more the thing of like, how are you, why are you, you're getting so confused by this basic premise of buy my sandwich. Yeah. Buy this sandwich. Um, no. I mean, have you ever, have you ever had a prawn cocktail sandwich? Um, I've had a prawn sandwich. Yeah. Or prawn Maybe. salads, prawn mayonnaise. Yeah. yeah. I've never had a prawn sandwich. They're not great. And there's not much that would draw me towards it, but I don't do it because of, of homophobia. Yeah. Or of any kind of fear of anything, I just don't buy a prawn cocktail sandwich or a prawn yeah. mayonnaise sandwich or whatever it is. So I might not buy this sandwich, but that's not a political move no. by me, whether or not I buy this sandwich over that sandwich. Yeah. It's just a sandwich. <laughs> it's the same thing. I think they were saying like there was a thing. I think they're basically just piling on because they saw a while ago we covered it. Marks and Spencer's had like a an inauthentic Indian wrap that they marketed as a, as a balti wrap, I think it was. Right. And it didn't fit someone's recipe of a balti. Yeah. And so like, oh, cultural appropriation. Oh, this, oh, that. And it's like, it's a sandwich. It's a wrap. Yeah. Chill the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking for your political aspirations in a supermarket? <laughs> are, you that, are you seriously that window shopping for your next belief? Yeah. That you're going from aisle to aisle. Oh, onion bhaji. Is that a political agenda? Yeah. Maybe it could be. I don't know. Maybe I, it's cheese. I, I was. Um, I don't know if it was a video that I was watching or something that I'd read. Um, but the amount of kind of evidence that's mounted up now that um, shows the that um, social media has actively radicalized like far left leaning people. Right like is is unreal and this is the kind of stupid behavior that it that that, that it comes from yeah like it's it and it's it's it was within, within the past few years between mainstream media and the way that they um the way that they trial uh, all of their articles across social media they'll take them down and then repost them with a different headline and see which one's most effective and it's always the most outrageous that right, is. right um the way that they're doing this is is actively riling people up and radicalizing them towards these stupid causes and it's it's for it's causing people to believe that the world is a lot more dangerous than it actually fucking is yeah and this is just another one of those things because it's like well the world is so dangerous i feel like i've got to fight everything and this is obviously this is obviously a problem right guys yeah. and then it all just kind of fucking it, it, all, it all just piles on and it's it's not yeah. it's it's that in itself is fucking dangerous it's not the fact that there's a load of shit going on that's dangerous well i think as well just people are it's people's stupid. attitude towards things and it, it, and the more that you social media you do the more to talk. we've had both of us people, have had individual accounts where we've started to have a conversation with somebody yeah and been like no this is this it's not worth it yeah like at one it's um the point that they're, they're not arguing a point they're just venting yeah. So there's no point arguing against it. And if I was to try and make this point, I don't think they're going to understand it because they're blinded by their emotion right now. Yeah. And, and I'm just going to, what, invest a yeah. couple of notifications on this? Like, yeah. No, I've worded out what I want to say. It's made sense in my mind, so just yeah. wipe it. And I, I, don't want to, I, I don't want it to come across as like, well, 
Uh, I think this way, and therefore, like, I'm obviously better than these people. The yeah. reason I I say that personally is because I've fucking been there. Like, I've mm. I've been in that emotional state where you'll get wrapped up about absolutely everything, and you'll see danger in everything where there's actually no danger there, and 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 it'll it'll co- it'll make it you start very to kind personal. of start to kind of justify violence and stuff like that. <laughs> like, I remember there was a point on this on this podcast where I was just where, where I was. Um, I don't know if it was jokingly or whatever, but I was advocating burning down the Houses of Parliament with everyone in it. Uh, like, okay. or, like it was when there was um, I, I think when when there was a a guy that had uh, driven across the bridge and crashed through the gate and, right. and like, I, I th- he got taken down before him and there was and like and I was legitimately being like, well, it's 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 a shame he didn't get away with it, right, and that's yeah. that's dangerous. Like it's yeah. it's da- it's dangerous that that people can be wrapped up into a state even even if they they think they're being perfectly innocent and their comments are perfectly innocent and they're doing things for the greater good you are advocating violence mm. and it 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 it's like the old things like this are just offshoots of it like let's get fucking wound up about everything you have to be able to paint as many people as evil as possible yeah you have to uh, yeah what while the actual act of saying it the words aren't dangerous it's the 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 mental state that you get in where you feel like you've justified something yeah and something makes sense to you has a trickle effect of yeah well if that becomes accepted if you start joking about that all the time the biggest irony of all of that is that the first the first thing that that these people do is they call you a fucking nazi yeah when in actual fact the nazis are the ones that are, that are ended up in the exact same situation that they're going into now, where they were able to justify all of these horrific things that they were doing yeah, to people. Yeah. Like, not quite on... Obviously, th- that's a different level. But it's the same kind of... It's 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 the same, um, same kind of mentality. Yeah, manipulating information. Yeah. And uh, manipulating uh, p- social priorities and moral priorities, I guess. Mm. Like, it's okay to hit one person, but not the other. Yeah. And you go, like, as yeah. soon as you start messing with that hierarchy or trying to make a hierarchy out of it, you go, like, well, then that's obviously creating some kind of agenda, which has happened yeah. in history in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And if anything ever kicks off and a single person gets charged or whatever, like, they, they, they will, in all likelihood, say, oh, I was just going along with a group. I was just doing what I was told to do. Yeah, and then again, it just becomes this thing about just like jokes just become, uh, can you you get stuck in a bubble, and then you need to be humbled. But before you become humbled, you might make a massive mistake. Yeah, like there was a thing you a while to, ago. You need to get away. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. You need to get away from this from the group that you that you're with in order to have that experience because uh, that yeah. that's the problem. I think not enough people step outside into. In, into kind of groups that they're not necessarily comfortable with or not or not familiar with, like um, l- like politically speaking, yeah, um, or 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 will dismiss all views that aren't aren't theirs and they keep themselves in this bubble and so they never get those kind of humbling moments. Yeah. I mean, I've had it with you where um, I think uh, I've, I've I've always found it. I will always find it funny if I punch you in the face. <laughs> I think every single scenario I can think of. It's hilarious if I yeah. punch you in the face. But if I was with yeah. a group of people telling them that's what I want to do, their interpretation of what they think I'm talking about yeah. is going to be vastly different. To what I'm like, I'll hit you in the face with a wiffle bat into a lake and that's going to be <laughs> fucking hilarious. <laughs> but they're like, you want to hit him with a, with a knife? You're like, no, 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 no. It's yeah. funny. Like, I've got my own idea. I haven't expressed the rest of the idea. Yeah. But the rest of the group would be like... the rest of the idea? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But yeah, just to, I, thought, I think a week ago or so, I was telling about I'd like to push punch you out of a plane. Yeah. Or push you out of a plane. Yeah. Like, it's for your own good. It's not like <laughs> so that you could feel extreme terror going down. Yeah. Like, it's for you to overcome your fear of being punched out of a plane. It's for me to punch you out of a plane. And you go like, yeah, it's, it, 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 there's a lot more to that idea, to that concept yeah. than punching someone in the face out of a plane yeah and uh, that doesn't get articulated as much so when people hear it and then they run with the idea with five percent of the information and then nobody challenges them on it so they don't need to justify the other 95 percent yeah it kind of crumbles so everyone kind of goes around going yeah it is a gay sandwich yeah they are saying <laughs> that gay people are sandwiches yeah you're like hey what no what? just don't buy the sandwich if you don't <laughs> want to buy the sandwich no one's forcing you to buy a sandwich capitalism just yeah yeah do what you want and then if you think three pounds is too much for a sandwich guess what don't buy the sandwich yeah just go somewhere else yeah make your own sandwich it's always cheaper to make your own sandwich yeah so just do that and then no uh, uh, it's purely rainbow capitalism if rainbow these... capitalism <laughs> that's one of the quotes uh. it's nothing more than rainbow capitalism okay, okay you can give it a name if you want yeah it's just they want I... your money 
if you if you want to have a conversation about um, businesses using charitable acts to promote themselves, mm. like and and what that means morally, I think that's an interesting conversation to have. But I don't think they're attacking anyone. But all the, but that conversation is literally just um, yes, the co- all corporations, all businesses are trying to manipulate you. Yeah. Just but one hundred percent of the time, they're trying to get your money. Yeah. Otherwise, they'd give it to you for free, and therefore they'd be a charity. And charities, guess what? Try to manipulate you because yes. they try to get your money. Yeah. Anybody trying to get anything out of you is always trying to manipulate you. Yeah. So that all that argument would be was: should this one manipulative company work with another manipulative company to hopefully have an outcome that is less evil than the two? Yeah. You go like, oh yeah, maybe if that's the priority. But yeah, what it just becomes an argument of weights and measures of how much evil do you want versus how much unevil outcome do you want? Yeah. So it's just like, yeah, it's just again, they're almost upset that there's a company trying to make money out of them. You go, yeah, that's 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 going to be all business wherever you go. Even your friends and family are going to want to have something out of you. So just fucking chill the fuck out. Yeah. Why are you angry about this? Just chill out. But yeah, uh, another Twitter user wrote, Pink Pound, who really benefits from their expensive sandwich? All the profit goes to M&S. So M&S benefits from their <laughs> expensive sandwich of three... Uh, again, three quids could be a lot for a sandwich. Mm. I think usually you get a meal deal most places for about three pound for a sandwich and a drink. But again, you're in one of the most expensive supermarket chains. It's going to be therefore more expensive than average. Um, all the profits go to m and Isn't this exploitation? I mean, yeah, they're exploiting you for your money. They're yeah. exploiting everybody as much for as their they're money. Exploiting anybody? Yeah, not your specific. Da- the straights get cheaper sandwiches. No, it's not a sandwich specifically for your demographic, <laughs> mate. It's a sandwich. Yeah. In a sandwich section of a shop. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Other members of the LGBTQ community pointed out that the sandwich could be more inclusive of vegetarians. Oh my god. <laughs> So again, you're just taking the idea and you're running with 5% of the information. Just, yeah, but if it's a gay sandwich, why has it got bacon in it? Because you could also make it vegetarian. Yes, they could. Most but guess what? Vegetarians. They're making more money out of with bacon. Because it appeals to a, <laughs> a wider audience because less because they sell, are vegetarians. Yeah, they sell less vegetarian sandwiches. That's why there's less vegetarian sandwiches. Yeah. The only argument that I've heard uh, for that kind of logic is um, uh, a few people talking about uh, one of them was stand up. Um, like, should there be more stand up? Com- like, the argument um, how many white people, for example, should you have on a bill? How many women? How many men? And it is obviously a flawed argument about you should go, it's about merit, it's about performance, it's about ticket sales at the end of the day. Mm. And the argument that's put forward was put forward badly. Uh, but I think it's basically saying that if you had, like, say, let's, let's remove that. Let's say it's sandwiches, vegetarian and, and non vegetarian. There's an argument to say that non that vegetarian sandwiches aren't, aren't selling as well because people aren't accustomed to buying more vegetarian sandwiches because there's more non-vegetarian sandwiches. Mm. So why don't we make it equal? Because they'll lose money. Yeah, maybe at first, and then maybe society will change. <laughs> and then it will be profitable. You yeah. Know? yeah, but do you want Marks and Spencers to be the changer of society? Yeah. What do you want? How much do you want from your lo- from your local supermarket? Yeah, like, it's just. Can they, they not just go back to providing a service rather than having to preach a message at the same time? Yeah, and then you go. What you're really talking about in that case is charity. You are selling more vegetarian sandwiches at a loss for a somewhat morally beneficial cause of trying to promote vegetarianism. That's a charitable thing to do. Yeah. So because they're losing money on it, and guess what? They've already lost £10,000 plus £1,000 that they've donated to another charity. So they're already doing that charitable donation thing, but not to vegetarians, to to, to LGBT groups or whatever. Yeah. So they're doing the best example of what you th- you think they might want to do, and you're still angry. Yeah. So what do you want? And they're already trying, and you're not happy that they're trying, but you're not happy if they don't try. <laughs> it's just, whoa, it's just more... On- it's again, it's that... You don't understand what you're angry about, and you found something, and you're just latching onto it. The same yeah. way that you would like choke a child in the street, you just walk. You know, you're walking your dog. You know, <laughs> it's raining. You don't know why you're upset, but it feels better to choke a kid. Yeah, or push you know? him into the road. Yeah, or punch him out of a plane. <laughs> and it's like ah, oh, it makes that makes me feel better. I don't know why, but subconsciously something was channeled out of that. So that's good. I think I'll go for a uh, excited meal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's pronounced yas. 
oh. or whatever it is. Um, in other news, again, uh, user submitted. Uh, this one I'm going to sum up quite quickly. Uh, Google is working on a new set of gender fluid emojis, 53 non-binary characters. And I, I immediately read this and I don't do emojis anyway. I accidentally got trapped in a GIF sticker conversation with you <laughs> that nearly made me smash my phone. <laughs> you sent me a fence post. First of all, I sent you some kind of cat with a birthday cake. Yeah. And it was literally, I'm starting to, I don't know, uh, right, it could be two things. One, I could be losing my mind. Yeah. Two, I could be dumber than I think. But I like to think <laughs> All it's, of the I'm, above. I'm just too big for phones. <laughs> That's my thought, is my hands are too big and masculine. So if you had to, like an iPad as yeah. a phone, it'd be great. That's why I I'm not happy about doing Instagram. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, was like, I have to type in the little cat in the little phone. <laughs> just can't, I've got big hands. They're not that big, but they're too big. But and my typing is getting much worse. Yeah. And yeah, in a text to you... I must have pressed... I've, I've never even looked at the sticker screen no. or anything. Just something happened, and then suddenly I'm in this thing. And I'm, like, trying to escape. But by trying to escape, I'm sending you stickers or something. And then I'm looking, I'm going, oh, my God! <laughs> and then that's making me feel more angry. So I'm just trying to more violently get out. And then it's, oh, now you're sending gifts. Yeah. And it's just like, no. Yeah, one was of a fence post in a field. Like that classic gif. Yeah. <laughs> Then the other one was something from like the Real Housewives of Atlanta or something. Yeah. That's like I'm just trying to escape. <laughs> so I never do any of them, but I was pretty sure that all emojis were non-gendered. So no. So the ones that I use typically are because they're like yellow faces. It's like try putting Lego. A, try putting a fucking gender to that. It's not. Yeah. It's, there's, there's a smiley no face. Is it but male or female? Some people send those ones that are like. Um, some like a person shrugging, which and they're usually made out to be a boy or a girl, depending on the the hair. Normally, if it's a <laughs> if it's a girl, okay. it's like in a ponytail. Sometimes right. they're black, sometimes they're white. Um, right. But there are those. There are like emojis of like more defined people. Yeah, still not enough to well, get cunty about. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't I don't understand emojis anyway. But I think it's like um, for me, for me. I think that there's there's definitely um, songs and films that I think accurately represent my personality. Yeah. So I'd be like... How many of them have Arnie in it? <laughs> there's not that many, actually, to list off. Oh, there's a few. Yeah. Yeah, Predator and Commando's there. Kindergarten Cop's definitely there. Yeah. Um, Twins is there. All right. Point made. <laughs> Fart. Well done. Right. <laughs> But if there's like, and there's like specific albums that I'm like, oh, if yeah. you listen to this album, um, this album meant a lot to me. So by listening to it, knowing that you might get an idea of me. I've never been like this doodle of a someone shrugging. Yeah. That's I what really I'm, identify with That's this. representing my emotion. Yeah. So just use words. Yeah. Just use words and spell them. Yeah. Spend the extra effort just to type yeah. them because they're very, they're very expressive. And yeah, I, well, to be fair, I then understand if your typing is so shortened to like you the letter u yeah. really r l y if that's how limited speak. you are yeah there's no that's, reason to do it anymore well it's the thing, it removes all the expression of the words and all the all the yeah. flow of the words yeah so yeah if that's how limited your language is maybe a picture is more expressive than you but aim to be as expressive ex express yourself as much as you can yeah so use words use everything else but just a picture of someone and then I'd, I see no argument as to why they should be male or female. It's a fucking picture. Yeah. The, the ancient hieroglyphics, they weren't specifically male or female. No. It was only by knowing that they, oh, that's actually the, you know, Tim yeah. Carmoon or so, that's... Yeah, you should treat it, Beyonce, treat it more it? like a language. Where Madonna? It's, like, it's, right. yeah. it's representative of an idea. It's not representative of you. Yeah. So it's just, fuck, it's just again, just chill the fuck out, man. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that was just a very short one of just like, yeah, why isn't it gender mm. neutral? It's a fucking smile. Yeah. You can attribute as much information as you want to an image, I guess. What's, what's, what's that film? Um, is Independence it, Day. No, is it, uh, is it... Rambo? Michael Douglas. I can't remember. He's in a suit, uh, walking around the city shooting people. Uh, had Falling a bad down. Day. Falling down. That's yeah. the film I always think of when I think of you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's definitely got a lot of me in it. Yeah. Definitely a few moments of that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, because there's definitely a walk. He just gets out of his car in traffic and then starts killing everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> and it just gets more and more beautifully extreme as it goes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great film. <laughs> Um, right, I'll, uh, there's still, oh, fuck, I've got so many. Um, we'll jump through a few little ones. Oh, yeah, these ones were, were interesting. Um, a Freedom of Information Act, uh, a Freedom of Information Request by The Sun found that in Newcastle under Lyme, residents are forbidden from crying. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you can't cry, argue, or bang loudly in your own home in Staffordshire. Oh. It's not allowed. Uh, the council in the area served one resident a notice to not create any wailing, jabbering, crying, and hammering on the wall type noises following right. a complaint from a neighbour. So, yeah, there's definitely noise crimes. Don't be too noisy in, a, in your room, in your After house. such and such. Because it will disturb it will disturb other people. Yeah. It's <laughs> and, yeah, if someone was crying themselves to sleep every night at a volume that was keeping me awake... I would, I'd find that um, uncomfortable, so I'd want someone to go and, and sort that out. Yeah. Uh, but it is a weird law to pass. <laughs> it's a weird wall to abide by. Yeah. Uh, you can't hear it outside the property at any time of the day and night. Um, they haven't actually, nothing's been breached yet, so it's just something that they've got, but no one's broken the law on. But the other thing that's funny is they give an on-the-spot fine of £100 <laughs> to a crying person. <laughs> 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 knock, knock. <laughs> What's happening? I've lost my you know, my, my, my partner. Oh, you, and you're crying, aren't you? But you're crying yeah. loudly. Give us £100. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like those parking violations where it's just a yellow sticker and they just stick it on your door. Oh yeah, the eviction notice kind of. It's yeah. just like hundred pounds. Why? Because you were crying last night. Yeah. We we didn't we didn't want to talk to you. Or just on your face, on <laughs> your crying, crying face. <laughs> <laughs> Stop crying or arguing. Have a good argument that ends in a police fine. Yeah, that's funny. It's just, <laughs> just funny. That's a, that sounds like a goal. Yeah. Well, I've 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 um, been. Uh, in the not in the middle, but like uh, a friend of mine was having a domestic uh, domestic dispute, who's and it wasn't violent by any means, and the woman was being manipulative, so called the police under three. He's going to hit me, right? And and I was part of the police call as well because I was driving down to pick him up, yeah. And so she said he's going to hit me, and uh, and his friends coming down to beat me up as well. So I pulled up to the address. There's already coppers there, yeah. And like they're obviously prepared for like someone's coming down to beat me up and like like hi neighbor yeah <laughs> hi um I, I, and i looked at my friend i was like are they here for you and he said yeah and i went fucking hell yeah all right and then i, I was just like because i'm just very customer servicey yeah uh to strangers i was very much just like to the to the police officer do you mind if i park here is that okay yeah. and my friend's like it's fine it's like no no i'm talking to the police right now yeah uh do you mind if i park here he's like yeah sure great do you want a cigarette like, just having a chat it was just like yeah, yeah so there have definitely been in circumstances where police have intervened where they weren't necessarily required yeah but yeah just to call the police on someone crying seems weird seems strange. stupid and uh lastly from me um uh, in twin in 2009 rapper coolio attempted to stage dive in staffordshire but nobody in the crowd caught him and so he was beaten up and got his shoes stolen <laughs> <laughs> Staffordshire doesn't give a fuck about Coolio. No, we hate Coolio. <laughs> that's just that's, that's a standard premise. <laughs> it's part of our motto. <laughs> Beat him up and steal his shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was just he was in the middle of a gig and I think he was the um uh he wrote Gangster's Paradise. I think that's Right. That's that's who Coolio is. Okay. And yeah, during a gig, he went to stage dive. I've had that again. I had that at, at, at school, uh, like Battle of the Band stuff. There was like an adult band at a gig that was filled with 16 year olds. And he tried to dive and he was about my build. And yeah. they were 16. So they just got crumpled. <laughs> 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 but it's funnier when his shoes get stolen. Yeah. So <laughs> take, take his shoes. <laughs> Comes back on stage, no shoes. Yeah. <laughs> you know shoe having motherfucker go yeah. on sing your song <laughs> <laughs> i think that came up on a recent podcast as well i think uh, not on ours but on, on, a, on a i think it was your mum's house podcast where they were talking about how someone went stage diving or crowd surfing and the fan stole his shoes stole someone's shoes whoever was doing it yeah and they came back to him like years later asked him to sign it yeah. dude i got your shoe <laughs> yeah i'll sign it <laughs> good 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 effort <laughs> 
<laughs> but yeah, there's more, but I think uh, that'll be me for this week. All right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Steve's collection of useless meanderings. Scum. Right. Feeling those, looking forward to those tomatoes in your chili. I am. I am salivating. Um, <laughs> during the filming of Groundhog Day, Bill Murray hired an assistant who was profoundly deaf and spoke only in sign language in order to make communication between himself, the director, and the studio as difficult as possible. <laughs> Big win. <laughs> yeah. Did Which he is... just not want to do the film? Or he just I didn't like it was the director? It a good film. I liked Groundhog yeah. Day. Or it was just a little thing just to add a little bit of silliness to it's the situation. Just, I think it's just Bill Murray doing <laughs> yeah, Bill Murray things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it, but only if. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just, there's just a bit of silly, fun surrealness yeah. just to pop that in there. That's how I'll work. <laughs> this is my friend Greg. <laughs> Greg! Sorry, he's deaf. He, he's deaf. Greg! No, wait, he's <laughs> prof- profoundly deaf. Sorry. <laughs> wave. You have to wave. <laughs> <laughs> Or he just knew a deaf guy who needed a gig. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> hey, you could nice. you yeah. could fuck up this film. Just didn't want to deal with the studio. <laughs> you could frustrate everybody if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um there we go. The uh the town of Monoe in Nebraska is the smallest town in the USA with only one resident. Elsie <laughs> uh, <laughs> Isla, eighty four, is the mayor, clerk, librarian, <laughs> and bar owner. She pays taxes to herself. Gives herself <laughs> her own liquor licenses and votes for herself in municipal elections. <laughs> Damn, I forgot to vote for myself today. Yeah. Who's going to be the man? Who's leading this shithole? <laughs> I guess it would always default to her. Maybe. Oh, me again. Or just a wandering animal that's yeah. just walking through their state. It's like, if someone else... Is she... Do you think it's begrudging? Or, like, if someone else moves in, will she vote for them? Be like, go on, you... <laughs> Please, anybody. Just, it's often... this, this place is just hellish. It's going, it's like, going to the dogs. You can't please these people. I mean, I mean, me. literally. Can't it, please me. It's going to the dogs in my will. <laughs> <laughs> please, please take <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, what, does she... Is it... Did you say it was a state? Uh, it's... Uh, Manoe is a... Uh, it's a town in Nebraska. Town. Right, okay. Did towns pay separate taxes? I guess uh, there's state tax and then there's something else tax. Yeah, I guess so. They have to collect their own taxes, maybe. I don't yeah, know. And sort something out. She pays taxes to herself. Yeah. So well, yeah, because there's, a, there's the a mayor. State. So you, and the mayor deals with how taxes are spent. It's like I think I'll spend <laughs> them on uh, beer. <laughs> <laughs> Stamp of approval. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> Yeah, be a good call, especially if you had a load of land. Be like, well, this is yeah. a town. This is a my town. town. Yeah, one house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can just charge taxes to everyone. Maybe that's why no one else lives there. And just <laughs> prices them out. Yeah, she only sells gay sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can't live here. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. <laughs> um, in 1969, Samuel L. Jackson was expelled from Morehouse for holding the board of trustees hostage, including uh, MLK Senior. Uh, demanding reform in the school's curriculum and governance. His mother, his mother, his mother, <laughs> afraid of him becoming a person of interest for the FBI, sent him to LA where he began acting. So he's been <laughs> <laughs> in hiding for 50 years as an actor. <laughs> Doing multiple films where he is holding hostages <laughs> or he is being held hostage by yeah. snakes yeah. or all this kind yeah. of stuff. <laughs> and all of it is just, this is just his life. Yeah. Just... So he held them hostage somewhere else and yeah. he fleed the police to LA? Uh, his mother sent him to live in LA. Um... Isn't that the story of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? <laughs> well, the Fresh Prince didn't hold anyone hostage. He was just beaten up. He, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. He didn't beat up anyone yeah. else. He didn't yeah. hold anyone in a room. All right. Yeah, no. Samuel L. Jackson is not the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. No, but he's he's better. But he snakes on a plane. He snakes on a plane. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, no, right. So, yeah, so was he worried about he's going to be on a watch list implies that he held them hostage, escaped, and then went to L.A.? Yeah. So, that is what it implies. Yeah, is his, that what happened? Or his was mother, he arrested? afraid of him becoming a person of interest for the FBI, sent him to LA where he began acting. So I guess to maybe to just get him away from the situation. Yeah, or maybe he was convicted, Not that arrested. Not problem with the situation. Who's on the Jersey Shore. <laughs> Hold as many hostages as well. <laughs> uh, but yeah, maybe um, he was convicted, he was arrested, 
But in yeah. order to break the cycle, she moved him away to Maybe. do something yeah. else. I'll look into it Could more be for next like week. That. Yeah, We'll continue the Samuel L. Jackson saga. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't know this. China owns all of the pandas in the world <laughs> and rents them to other countries for a million dollars a year. <laughs> <laughs> Rent a panda. The only exception is uh, to this is the two pandas that China gifted to Mexico in the 70s, but with an agreement that if they had any offspring, China would own them. <laughs> <laughs> if they have an offspring, you give us another million dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> Basic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why the pandas aren't reproducing. The yeah. We don't want to be in debt to China. Okay. We're broke. We've, <laughs> yeah. we've yeah. got bamboo. <laughs> a million dollars a year. Yeah, we're worth a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they're so conceited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just pressure from you know the zoos. Like, please don't mate because we haven't got another million dollars a year. <laughs> like, I feel bad for the zoo. They're yeah. giving me all this grass. Yeah. Or yeah. whatever they get. Yeah, I think maybe they were looking to make like a lot of money on that, but then yeah. the pandas in protest <laughs> decided yeah. against the communist against regime. Against the gay sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, we'll, we'll win it. Just not gonna we'll reproduce. just delete our species. Yeah, we're not going to feed you. into this broken system yeah. of panda laundering. Yeah, China is the one sitting in front of the tank now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they say China or panda. The pandas are sitting in front of the tank. Yeah. 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 Or setting themselves on fire. Yeah. <laughs> that was China, wasn't it? I think. That was the Tibetan monks. Yeah. They set themselves on fire. And it was the same protest, similar protest. We celebrated it recently, I think. I don't know. The anniversary of Tiananmen Square, I think that was. Tiananmen Square was the big protest where was all the, the students tank? were massacred. Oh. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything about it, actually. I just know that that. Yeah, there was one where one guy like tried to stop a tank. Yeah, that was his, the tank. Uh, that was the tank. Was that Tiananmen Square? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I thought. You, yeah, yeah. That was. Yeah, and then yeah, there was a separate one with the Tibetan monks. Yeah, they're b- b- to f- uh, to seven free, psychopaths did a great bit on that to free the free Tibet from something somewhere. Yeah, I don't know. I've only seen seven psychopaths once. I can't even remember if it's any good. It's good. Is it good? It's very good. All right. Okay. I'll rewatch. Okay. Uh, and finally. Um, in 1896, a temporary one-day city was uh, <laughs> named in Texas called Crush, uh, where two <laughs> locomotives were to be smashed head-on for the purposes of spectacle. It was uh, it was for a few hours the second largest city in Texas with 40,000 attendees. Um, the collision <laughs> caused engine boilers to explode, resulting in death and injuries. <laughs> <laughs> So, so it feels like they set up the city to get around legal laws for that. Setting, maybe I'm it's guessing. not normally it's not legal to smash two locomotives head on into each other <laughs> with people to sat yeah, around. So watching. we're going to make a city which has a law that says it's cool. <laughs> yeah. And yes, people will die. Yeah, but it's forty thousand of you. Yes, yeah. stand towards the back. Yeah, tourism in crush is just <laughs> way up. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was briefly up, and then it like halved for some reason. Yeah. I think it was all the death. <laughs> The well, half of them just died. Yeah. Come to crush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But that's scum this week. That's scum. Yeah. Um, oh, that kind of goes on, actually. There was a bit about, um, uh, you know, STEM fields. Like uh, STEM. Science, science technology, technology, EM. Engineering. <laughs> Manufacturing. manufacturing yeah that makes sense yeah there's a there's a I, I didn't find enough to support it like research wise but there was a thing about apparently some people want to change it to steam so that it includes art and everyone's like no, <laughs> yeah, that's, no. The that's the thing people just like art is not a focus of stem the it's arts actually <laughs> are completely separate <laughs> yeah it's well they like, have nothing to do with well there's there's arguments for like it is involved in it like architecture design? for example design that's yeah that's different yeah and like just artistic flair and creativity yeah you got like yeah there's aspects of art in stem but it's not the focus of stem STEM focuses on only those four fields and only those four fields because they all have an one goal. Yeah. <laughs> Not like to do everything else. Art is incredibly important, more important than a lot of things. I'd say equally as important as STEM. It's imp- yeah, it's important for the for the I think it, for our whole kind of development. Like the 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 whole mm. reason that we um 
that the, the knowledge got passed around for so many thousands of years is through people telling stories and that's kind yeah. of like the basics of it and just there's there's so much important in regards to expression in regards to exploring yourself it's definitely important it's very no important. one's but it's just that, it's, but it's just it's not, not the science. focus of stem yeah <laughs> it's like trying to say that we shouldn't have a football league and a cricket league we yeah. should have a cricket league <laughs> and it's like why yeah. well because football and cricket are both important you go yeah. okay but they're not the, they're not they're both important but they're not identical they're, no. they're they're just different sports yeah australia tried it with football and rugby to make australian rugby or whatever it was australian yeah. football i can't remember no we got to be inclusive <laughs> oh, just... who's offended by and this and the thing is it, it it's it's perceived that it's meant to be a kind of a, a sneaky way to try and get more people into stem fields right okay so being you like, can artists say artists are in stem fields yeah, like, so no. now look at the uptick of women in stem fields it's like, or whatever the well, agenda is yeah are they in stem fields or are they in steam fields in steam arts. fields yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah it just seemed weird and yeah. just seemed like i don't know what you're trying to say are you trying to say that arts is important because it is yeah are you trying to say that arts is as important as stem okay it is but are you trying to say that they're exactly the same and that they should be combined yeah then why i don't understand yeah. they'll get less attention you've got the arts which is a hundred percent of the arts yeah or you can be a 20 percent of steam <laughs> <laughs> which would you rather be yeah just be your arts mate it's, Fucking hell. Uh, it's childish yeah, but again, there's just a yeah. I don't know. People mm. just don't know what they want. So they just weak. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was thinking uh, before about um, YouTube as an influence uh, on me because I never. It took me a while to get um, inspired by YouTube type stuff. Mm. For example, the podcast. It took a while to even, to even consider it being like a thing we've put. We've been recording it for years. Yeah. I haven't been putting it on YouTube, even the sound files. I'm slowly doing that now with the back catalogue. Yeah. But, you know, it's trying to... Um, I never thought before, it's like, oh, if I'm going to make a film, I can just make it and put it on YouTube. There was never that aspect. It was like, oh, you've got to do a whole other thing. And of course, that was just, you know, blinding yourself with excuses. Yeah. But now that more and more people are doing it, you're more inspired to take upon it yourself. Mm. So I can understand there being more content or more things there to inspire, which I think is the argument. If you, if there were more women in STEM fields, then more women would be motivated to get into STEM. Yeah, yeah. There's that, you, maybe that is an argument, but you just got to go... You, the, only, the only way to make it work the way people are saying is I think it's just charity, which is what I was saying before. Mm. Is it's just like well yeah if you say that you'll you'll take two women for every one man, that's not an intelligent way to go about it, but it's a charitable way to go about it. And if you want to do that, be open about it. It'll be a more genuine discussion. And again, it might be the the vegetarian sandwich argument of you're trying to do this so that the world will change and then it will make sense. Yeah, but it's a how much do you want? Why don't why isn't why isn't it an individual's responsibility? Mm. Why is it a society's, a society's <laughs> responsibility to change the way that it works in itself? Why can't the society just be the society and then individuals add to it? Yeah. Because I feel like that's the system. But the problem is that there are minorities and then the minorities feel like they should be helped by everyone else. Yeah. And there's, there's loads of, there's loads of, uh, there's loads of arguments we could talk about to go into about that. But we are, don't want to go on too long. Yeah. The main one being, <laughs> just to briefly sum it up, because we can talk about it later. There's people people who argued that tight women's tights are made for white people. Why don't they make black people's tights or Asian people's tights? Why okay. are they always for white people? Yeah, and yeah. Again, it, it, maybe it's more complicated. But I had a quick Google, and eighty three percent or something over eighty percent of Britain is white. And over seventy five percent of America is white. Yeah, it's to do with ratios. So if you were gonna mar um, if you were gonna sell tights, yeah, you would sell it to the majority skin color. People have this, and, weird, you, and it's related to skin color. People have this weird idea about representation that it needs to be fifty fifty, but it's like, well, fifty fifty isn't. It just doesn't it, work. It's not rep It's not representative. It's it's yeah. it's not equal. It's but, like we said. I, I was saying this about the the Oscars when it was a big stink a few years ago about there being no, uh, no. Uh, directors or black, black people. nominees or something or, the, yeah. or very few and Strip. when you when you actually went into the in, into the past winners and the past nominees and everything it was representative like of the amount of black people there were in the country compared to white people yeah equal representation doesn't mean 50 50 yeah like it's it it's but again it's it, yeah. it's, it's a stupid because it's a measure that is so fluid 
Yeah. Okay, well, what race are you? Yeah. Okay, what does that mean? Does that mean that you either fit into one of five categories or do you fit into one of 500 car- car- yeah. uh, categories? Because you could have one for every country. I don't know how many countries there are, but then you've got different sections of each country. Mm. Then you've got different sections of the sections of each country. Yeah. How far do you go? And then, oh, what about height? And then what about all oh, It's an infinite loop that, you, that makes no sense. Yeah. So, yeah, it, because, and I guess it's the, same, it's, it's the way to say it is, it's the same thing of, what do they call it? I think it's capitalism or democracy, I think it is. Mm. It's not the best system. It's not a perfect system, but it's the best system but we have. They say the same about capitalism as well. It's not a perfect yeah. system. You need checks and balances. Eventually, you will have lots of very rich people. Mm. And, and and at that point, that's when they suggest that you have um, kind of rules to just kind of bring it down and level mm. it out. But it's it's the system that thus far has led to us being the most economically thriving um, mm. iteration of humanity that's ever existed. It doesn't mean there's no poor people. Yeah. It means there's less than there were in, like, fucking medieval times, and there's less that there ever have been in, uh, like, communistic uh, And the countries. only, I, the only um, I, ideology I'm talking about is that people, businesses are interested in money. Yeah. So everything that they operate from is based on making money. Yeah, it's got nothing to do with your um, sexual orientation, your gender, your sex, or your uh, race. It's just based on well, we'll sell you sandwiches that you will buy because it makes no sense for them to sell sandwiches that you won't buy. Yeah. So understanding that means that they're not trying to give you a political ID, a political idea, or kind of manipulate, uh, yeah, or manipulate you anyway outside of your wallet. Mm. it's just yeah these yeah why yeah wanting charity and not wanting it at the same time don't call it charity well (laughs) it is if they're losing money on it yeah but doing it for some kind of moral gain yeah and yeah maybe they do want to change the world but how many vegetarian sandwiches do you need to change the world (laughs) and is this a joke (laughs) Just (laughs) yeah if there were more vegetarian sandwiches maybe more people would eat more vegetarian sandwiches but then yeah, they just want to make money. Mm. You be the you be the change that you want to see in the world, not yeah. Marks and Spencers. Not by telling other people what to do either. Yeah, if everybody stopped buying prawn mayonnaise sandwiches or stopped putting tomatoes in chili, then they would be sold less. Yeah. So that would instigate the change. Yeah. But they want yeah, it's that whole confusing thing of they want everyone else to change or isn't it isn't it problematic? Because say eighty percent, say eight out of ten tights that were made were for white people. That makes perfect sense given that ideology. Yeah. Of businesses are driven by money, and well, it only by makes the market. sense. Yeah. The, the bus- a business will never do something detrimental to to its bottom. Yeah. Because it's line only like it's only belief. It's only religion is making money. Yeah. So why would they ever do something that doesn't make money? Yeah. So yeah, if you want to change the world, then stop giving them money or yeah. give them money in different ways. Yeah, yeah, and that's one to grow on. Yeah, <laughs> don't want to get into it, but <laughs> yeah, an hour and a half later. Yeah, yeah, all yeah. good. Anyway, yeah, so that's this week. That's this week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, uh, I am at Sing It Steve. Yes, I'm at Nick Snip, and I'm at. We are at Pulling Teeth Pod on Twitter and Instagram. And we are. Uh, if you want to send anything in, as we've had for the yeah, entirety this, this, of this episode, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's uh send it to wisdom at pulling teeth podcast.com yeah yeah um, that's all good and we do appreciate it it's always good to yeah 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 always good it saves us work yeah and if you do want to show us some love i still can't look into the camera when i'm saying this <laughs> but, i'll do it you i'll look and you talk <laughs> yeah uh, subscribe to us on youtube leave us an itunes review or uh yeah just send us a message we're mainly just interested in communicating with people and just getting the message out there cool done yeah, done. All right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 141. See you next week. Good. Cool.